If you're a loop maker and want to start making more money and get more placements from your loops, then I have some strategies that you need to hear. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down exactly what you need to be doing in 2023 and beyond to maximize the power of your loops and push your career forward to get those placements you've always dreamed about. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to be sharing with you what I'm calling the three P's of selling sound kits online that's going to help you generate more traffic to your site and help you maximize your revenue. So there's two main strategies that we can use to get our loops out there to other producers. The first is a more direct method and the second is definitely a lot more of a passive technique. Each method has its pros and cons, but you want to be doing both in one way or the other to maximize your chances of success as a loop maker, especially if you want to be doing music full time. Let's go ahead and get started into the first method, which is networking with other producers and sending them loops directly to get placements and collab beat sales that way. This can be an extremely effective way to earn money as a producer, highlighted by guys like Kavi who have made multiple six figures by just sending loops to other producers. The way that this works is pretty simple. First, you connect with another producer and send them your loops and samples. Samples. They then create full beats with those loops and samples, which they then send out for placements, or they post them on their YouTube type beat channels and list you as a collaborator. When they sell a beat lease that uses one of your samples, you'll get your collaborator split, which is usually 50-50 if it's just you and the other producer on the beat. And if they get a major placement with that beat, you'll get your producer credit, royalties, and a portion of the advance as well. Okay, awesome. So how do we find these producers that we can work with? And how do we connect with them and build a relationship to the point where we're making these kind of sales regularly. Well, before we actually start thinking about collaborating, we have to make sure that our loops are actually super high quality. I know I say this all the time, but when we're actually trying to make money off of our music, we have to make sure that the music is actually good. Especially if we're talking about loops, which most producers only spend a few seconds listening to before they decide if they like it or not. If the quality of your music isn't there, then everything I'm about to go into this video is gonna be for nothing. So make sure you invest the time that it takes to actually become a really good musician before you start trying to make a ton of connections. Because the last thing you wanna become known as is that guy that makes mid loops in the mind of these producers. First impressions are super important. So if the first melodies that another producer hears from you are mid, it's going to affect your brand negatively in their eyes. Okay, so now that we're super awesome at making melodies, what next? Well, just like with posting type beats, we need to figure out what our main niche that we're going to focus on is. For example, Kavi has basically made himself the go-to guy for soulful loops by focusing mainly on that sound and becoming the best he could be at making those types of melodies. Luckily, you have a lot more flexibility ability with your sound and your niche when it comes to being a loop maker compared to just posting tight beats. But you still want to figure out what your main sound is so we can start to target potential collaborators. Let's use me as an example. My channel mainly focuses on underground SoundCloud type of beats. So we're going to pick that as our niche to target and find other producers that we can work with. Okay, so we're here at my computer. I'm going to take you step by step in my process of finding producers that we can potentially collaborate with. Like I said, my channel's niche is kind of like underground SoundCloud type of stuff. So we're going to go with plug and beat type beats just to keep it simple. I have vidIQ installed, which actually lets me see people's subscriber counts next to their name, which is really handy for this. And basically my thought process is just go through the search results and find different producers producers and see who we like and who we can reach out to. This vidIQ extension makes things easier too. Um, we see this guy right here, he's got over 100,000 subscribers. So it's obviously gonna be a lot harder for even someone who has almost like 10,000 subscribers to reach this guy. So if I didn't already know this guy, I'd be thinking that this would be someone on the higher end that I might reach out to. But to be honest, we wanna build with producers that are like at or around our level as a producer, if that makes sense. So for example, my channel, I have about 10,000 subscribers. I'm looking to work with producers that have anywhere from like 1,000 subscribers to maybe like 10, 20, even maybe 50. That's a good range for me to target personally with where I'm at in my career right now. But if you're starting from scratch, it's gonna be a lot less than that, obviously. And that's okay. You don't wanna only target like the top dogs because a lot of times they're just too busy and they're already working with like the people they know already. So it's harder to break in and like get into their circle and start collaborating with them. But producers who have less subscribers and followers are obviously gonna have a lot more free time to network and work with newer producers. So you wanna build with those guys because who do you think is gonna be a top dogs in the future? It's gonna be these producers at the lower tiers working their way up. So let's just go ahead and find a random video. This prod frizz dude has like 4.3K subscribers. Okay, yeah, so I knew it's gonna be a plug and B type beat already. So since I have a lot of plug and B melodies, this is gonna be a good guy for me to potentially send them to. 
So I'm here in a new Google Sheets document that I made. Uh, this is completely free. All you need is a Gmail account to be able to use this. And we can go ahead and create a simple template to store these producers information in them. So let's go ahead and put producer name here. We're gonna put links to their YouTube and Instagram. And then we can put other information like how many subscribers they have, types of beats they like to make, literally anything. So let's just do this guy for an example. His name is Prod Frizz. So we're gonna go Prod Frizz. Let's go click on his YouTube channel so we can get his uh, channel URL. I'm gonna copy and paste that here. And then let's go ahead and see if we can find his Instagram. Uh, we can click on his about me. He should have it listed here. Most producers who take this seriously is gonna have their contact info pretty easy to find. Uh, he's got a link tree, let's click that. And boom, here's his Instagram. Got 800 followers and he's already followed by some people that I know. That's always a good sign. So if I'm looking for more producers to work with, this is obviously a really good guy to try and reach out to. Looks like he's even got a plug and B sound kit. Like this dude's grinding, he's trying to make it. We want people like this in our circle, especially as we're coming up. Cause like I said earlier, the next generation of like top producers is in the trenches of like YouTube and type beat channels and beat stars. They're out here grinding, you know, just like you. So that's one guy. We can literally keep going. There's plenty of people, you know, like this guy's got 26K. This guy's got 600. Like there's, there's producers of all sizes for you to find, you know? I can very easily find guys with like sub counts closer to mine. Just as easy I can find guys with more or less sub counts as well. We can also go here to filters and sort by upload date. So we're gonna see the new beats as they're being uploaded right now. You can do this to find some smaller guys. If you go in the initial search results, it's obviously gonna be the most popular beats and the most popular producers that show up there. So you wanna try sorting like this so you can find the newer guys. Cause here we got producers like 30, 240, 1.3K. You're finding the less popular search results here. So it makes it easier to find guys at your level if you're just starting out. Now it's very easy to just use some sort of scraping plugin to grab all these guys and put into a list for you. But to be honest, you don't wanna do that. You wanna be a little bit meticulous with it. We're in the plugin B niche right here. So even though this guy showed up, it's a homicide gang type beat. And that's more of a rage type of sound. And if we're a plugin B producer, we obviously aren't gonna be sending a rage producer these kinds of melodies. So it's important to actually click onto the videos and listen to the beats because one, you wanna make sure you actually like the music that producer makes. And two, you wanna make sure that they're actually gonna use your loops when you send them. Like I said earlier, it's gonna be a little bit harder to reach the top dogs. You know, they're already more established and all that, but that doesn't mean you can't try to reach out to some of them. I will just put a majority of your networking efforts into building horizontally and not necessarily vertically. It's gonna be a lot more effective. And when you're building this way, you guys are all gonna come up together over time. But yeah, we just keep scrolling and find these producer contacts until we have a list that we're satisfied with. And then then we can start reaching out to them. And when we put them in a Google Sheet like this, it makes it super easy to keep track of everyone. Okay, sweet. So we have a list of producers that are probably gonna like the loops we make, but how do we go about reaching out to them and connecting with them? Well, as someone with a decently big type beat channel, I've had a lot of people over the years reach out to me and ask to send loops. So I can give advice from both perspectives on what works best. The general advice I see a lot when it comes to networking like this is to first engage with the producer like unrelated to music, and then bring up the topic of sending loops once a conversation has already been started or had. As someone who's actually been a full-time producer for the last few years, I don't have time to talk to and have these conversations with random ass people every day. I can sense right away when someone's trying to talk to me with ulterior motives, and honestly, it's a turn off a lot of the times. So instead of asking me how my day is when we don't even know each other, or stupid shit like what my favorite snare is, just be direct and get to the point instead. Saying something quick and simple like, hey, I heard your beats on YouTube and I really love your sound. I have some loops I think you'd really like. Do you have a loop email I can send them to? Is a really good way to reach out. You can even attach a video with your loops playing in the DM so that they don't even have to click out of the message to hear your stuff. That's the sauce low key, so remember that. In my opinion, it's best to be direct and to the point like this when you're reaching out. It'll be a lot easier to start conversations and actually get to know the other producer once they've heard your music and determined that they like the sound of your loops. When you start to gather these producers' emails, you're gonna wanna save them in a Google Sheet or something like that so you can keep all their information together in one spot. And then you're gonna wanna start sending packs to this list regularly. And just like with posting type beats, it's gonna take some time of doing it consistently before we start to see some results. But once you start to build build your relationships with the producers on this list and grow your reputation, you'll start to see those collab sales and placements come in. This is the best type of networking that you can be doing with other producers who are actively working on their careers, you know, making sales, getting placements. And these are the types of people that you want in your circle, especially if you wanna do this full time. However, once again, you're gonna to need to be active and consistent over a long period of time to see success doing this. And that takes us to my next strategy of getting sales and placement with your loops, which is to post them online for other producers to find 
and use them on their own. One way that I don't see a lot of people talk about is to share their loops on other producers' Discord servers. A lot of bigger producers like Cody have Discord servers with loops from their community posted there. Most of the time, these are organized into categories and sections, making it easy for producers to find what they're looking for. And in the case of Cody's server, he goes through the loops regularly, and he even has a role for loop makers that he really likes called Melody Messiahs. I've literally posted loops in a server before, and then woken up the next day with the producer messaging me telling me that he got the beat with my loop placed already and asking for my payment info. I've also had Cody himself use my loops in his videos just by me posting them there. And yes, when you're doing something like this, there's always the possibility that your loops are gonna get stolen and used by another producer and sold or something like that. But you really shouldn't worry too much about stuff like that. Too many producers are so worried with their loops and beats getting stolen that instead of sharing their music with the world and putting themselves out there, they just let their stuff sit on their hard drive and gather dust. And you don't wanna be that guy. If the situation ever comes up where your stuff gets stolen, deal with it then. But don't choose to not put yourself out there because you're afraid of something happening that hasn't even happened yet. The next way you can share your loops publicly is by posting them on sites like Looperman or Waves.com. And yes, I know that when you post your beats on Looperman, they're required to be royalty free, which means you lose out on the ability to get paid on the placements that you get by posting your loops on this site. But it's still an amazing website to grow an audience as a loop maker and start to build connections with other producers. Just how famous rappers go on YouTube still to find beats, tons of famous producers still go on Looperman whether they admit it or not. Personally, I've made some of my first big connections as a producer just by posting my beats on Looperman, and the GOAT himself, Minus and Go, has gotten like countless major placements just by posting on Looperman a lot. And even though it is royalty free, I still get tons of producers who use my loops on there and then still ask permission for me to post them and ask where to send splits to. Another website similar to Looperman is Waves.com. Waves.com is similar to Splice, in the way that you can navigate and find loops, but producers who post their loops there are getting paid for it, unlike Looperman. You have to apply to become a seller and start posting on the platform, but once you win, you get paid every time someone downloads one of your loops. I'm on there myself, and even though I haven't posted in forever, I still get enough off of my catalog to pay for my own Waves.com subscription, so I know that the potential is there to make money if you take it seriously. You can also choose what type of licensing you want for your loops. You can keep it royalty-free like Looperman, or you could also require splits and publishing when major placements are gotten with your loops. And no matter what licensing option you choose, you still get paid whenever your loop gets downloaded. You do need to get artwork for the loops that you post on there, but this is gonna be required either way for my next method that I'm about to get into, which is posting your loop kits on YouTube. Just how you can post your beats as type beats on YouTube, you can also post your loop kits on there as well. And there's also tons of producers who have found success by doing this, and it's a lot less saturated when compared to type beat channels. You're basically gonna post your kits on YouTube as lead magnets, and in exchange for downloading and using them, the producer is required to give you their email address or subscribe to your channel or something like that. But this doesn't make your loops free at all. They're still required to give you splits for beat sales and clear the loops with you when they get major placements with them. So make sure your contact info can be found easily on your channel for when this happens. If you do this consistently with good loops and keywords, you'll start to grow your channel over time and develop an audience. And when the man is there, it's the perfect time to start a kit selling site and continue to grow your email list. This is where the three P's of selling sound kits that I mentioned earlier come in, and those stand for product, platform, and promotion. Product means having good loops and sound in your kits. In the case of loop kits, this means having truly exceptional loops that can't be found anywhere else, ideally. Going back to Kavya as an example, his soul loop kits are made in collaboration with Grammy-nominated vocalists and session musicians, leading to a truly phenomenal and unique sound that 99 producers just can't make on their own. This doesn't mean you have to spend a fortune hiring your own session musicians, but you need to go above and beyond to develop your sound and become the go-to guy in your niche, like I said earlier. The second P stands for platform, which stands for the actual website where we're selling our kits on. The most popular platform for this is Shopify, but there's plenty of options to choose from. You can definitely start off on simpler platforms like Selfie or Gumroad, but you lose out on a lot of control and marketing capabilities when you do. Shopify gives you the most control of your website and lets you connect with other tools like GemPages to build pages that will convert people more effectively than other platforms will. You also gain access to more advanced email marketing capabilities, which you definitely want to take advantage of when you're growing your kit selling site. And the third and last P stands for promotion, which is how we drive traffic to our website so we can actually start to make sales. I'm gonna say this first, if you haven't already started to make content for social media, now's the time to start. I know, I know, we're producers, not influencers, but social media and short form video specifically isn't going anywhere anytime soon. 
So if you don't want to get left behind in the dust, you got to keep up with the trends. Making content for social media doesn't have to be you doing these cringy TikTok dances over your beats or anything like that. You just need to figure out a way to include making videos as a part of your music making routine. Whether you decide to post full length tutorials on YouTube or more bite sized videos for TikTok and Instagram reels, you need to find a medium and stick with it consistently over a long period of time. Just like everything else that goes into this, it's going to take time to grow on these platforms, especially if you're starting from zero. Once you find what works for you and your platform and start to develop an audience, you'll already have the products that you can market to them and that you can also market to the rest of the public as well. This has been a pretty quick overview of my three P's of selling sound kits online. If you want to hear more information about these topics and want to see how I started my own kit website and made over $700 in the first month, click this video right here.